Okay, this is the second Blackboard discussion on the production possibilities model. Remember, we started here with this unlimited wants and limited resources. This is the big problem economists look at. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little picture of society here. This is a society. We'll make them about, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All these human beings over here, we'll say it's, oh, I don't know, 10,000 human beings living over here. And these people are going to represent the world and all of its problems as economists look at them. Unlimited wants and limited resources. They have a decision to make. We're going to narrow this decision down to one particular representation of unlimited wants and limited resources. Here's their unlimited wants. They can produce grapes for wine. They like to drink their wine. Or... They can grow vegetables. That's a representation of unlimited wants. Of course, in our society, it's endless, this list, isn't it? That's the unlimited part. Limited resources. Here, they have the labor, what they can do, and we're going to say the resources are labor and land. Here's a picture of their land. This picture becomes very important to the discussion, so pay attention here. Their land has a big hill like this. And it goes down, 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 down to a nice flat valley like that. Now, the sun, let's take a quick picture here of the sun. Now, the sun is over here, and it's going to shine on this land in this direction like that. It goes in this way. So I guess this would be west over here. So the sun's coming over here, and it's shining over here. And this is the land they have to work with. What are they going to do when they have to make this choice? What their choice is, where are we going to grow vegetables? Where are we going to grow grapes? And how many people are we going to put on there to do it? So when they look at this piece of land as their resource, they have to make a decision. Now, what's interesting about the world is not all pieces of the resources are perfectly good at doing everything. As a matter of fact, this chunk of the land here is great for growing grapes. And this chunk of the land down here on the valley is great for going, growing vegetables. So now they start to say, well, let's go to work. Let's start planting some grapes and let's start planting some vegetables. What do you think the first thing they're going to do is? They're going to start planting grapes where? Down here? No, they're not going to plant down here. This place is great for vegetables. You could produce a thousand pounds of vegetables per acre down here. Up here, you could produce 50 pounds of vegetables per acre. Think about that. Where would you choose to grow vegetables? Down here, where per acre you get a ton, or up here, where per acre you get a little bit? Right. So they're going to produce all their vegetables down here and produce all their grapes on the hill. Makes sense, right? It's perfectly good. Here's the issue with the economizing problem, though. They don't just grow them, oh, all the grapes up here and all the vegetables down there. They have to decide how many vegetables and how many grapes to grow. What if these people don't like grapes? What if they don't want wine? Then you just start growing your vegetables up the hillside, too. It's stupid to grow grapes up there. What economists do when they do the production possibilities curve is they say, look, these people have to decide how many grapes to grow. So you take a little chart here. You go from 0 to, let's say, 10,000. That's how many grapes you can grow from 0 to 10,000, how many pounds of grapes, perhaps. And then how many vegetables to grow, say, 0 to 10,000 here. If you used all your land, now this, of course, is great for grapes. You could get 2,000 pounds of grapes per acre here, right? So this is great for growing grapes. Down here, you couldn't grow as many good wine grapes. You'd grow some grapes, but they wouldn't be very good wine grapes. So what do you do? You make a decision. How many grapes are you going to grow? Well, if you grew everything grapes, in other words, you didn't do any vegetables, you do everything grapes, you could grow 10,000 pounds of grapes. That would be that dot there. If you grew everything vegetables, you would grow 10,000 plus maybe, let's say it's 12,000 pounds of vegetables, that dot over there. 
So if they used all of their resources for grapes, they could grow 10,000 pounds of grapes. If they used all of their resources for vegetables, they could grow 12,000 pounds of vegetables. What are they going to choose to do? That's their economizing problem. And now here's the thing. What you got to think about is it's not just one or the other. Of course, they have a combination. And when you draw a production possibilities model, what you're drawing is the combination that they might be able to grow if they took a little bit of the grape land, grew less grapes, and applied it to growing vegetables. And you increase your production of vegetables to here. So you decrease your production of grapes to, say, 6,000. You move along the production possibilities curve. And as you take the land away from grapes, I suppose you would stop growing grapes down here first, wouldn't you? Because then you get all these good vegetables here. You start to increase your production of vegetables. And you end up at point A here. This is a little story about the economizing problem and the production possibilities curve. In the production possibilities model number three, I'll give you a more detailed numeric example of what it's all about. Hang in there. It'll come together much better there, I think. We'll see.